Hey, Richard Meller again, again here. Um, I'm just going to make a quick few comments here. I, I, um, I'm actually quite proud of myself. I wrote two or three articles on the Teamster election over the last two days. Take took me a lot of hours. That doesn't matter. Some people might think they're garbage. Some people might not. But if, I'm a bit selfish in a sense because um, I do it for myself as well. I'm not active in the union anymore. I'm not around youth anymore in the way I used to be, <clears throat> and but I have to do something. Otherwise, I think um, I've got one of those personalities that I'd be living in the pub. I go visit the pub, mind you, but that's just to to help convince the people in there the evil of their ways, as I've said before. But the the thing I wanted to mention today, because I was talking to a guy in the pub, a Latino guy, and like. The thing about struggle, about what we have and all the benefits we have and the wages we have and the freedom we have, uh, um, everything I have, somebody fought for. When I think of, I retired as an equipment operator. Becoming an equipment operator, or operating a digging machine, I'm not going to get in the details of it, I got because a black guy filed a discrimination grievance. I think it was Leon Hilliard. I can't remember if he did. I wouldn't mention his name if he wasn't dead. I think he's dead. He was a scab in the strike and I didn't have a lot of respect for him. But nevertheless, he filed a, 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 a discrimination grievance because in my business, and I, we were uh, a water utility workers all my life. I've been a laborer, really, physical work, worked in factories, but primarily the shovel was my tool. And um, uh, uh, he filed a grievance because we could never get out of that ditch. It was very hard to get out of that ditch. The ditch is hard. Even in the public sector, it's hard work. They mock us because, oh, the private sector, oh, you get this, you get breaks, you get health care. We get benefits they should be getting. And the, the, the workplace is somewhat more humane because it's the public sector. And so... So I can, we, there was a t we, we fought about that, we fought about that, and in my yard, which is a very strong union yard, we didn't allow people to just get on the piece of equipment. I mean, in other places, other areas of where I worked in my company, the company that I worked in, if you were friends with the foreman in lunchtime, he'd let you play with the equipment, and then you could take the test. You could say, my uncle owned a farm in but, but whatever Idaho, and, um, and, and uh, you would qualify for the test and they got jobs. Not all of them, but they got jobs. Some came from the operating, operating engineers and took the tests for equipment operators where I worked at East Bay Mud. Uh, 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 and they, they came in from operating engineers. They were skilled operators. And we could never get out of the bloody ditch. You could become a foreman. I didn't want to become a foreman. I was active in the union movement, very active. I didn't want to be in charge of people. They could put all sorts of people with me that needed help, alcohol or drug abuse, and, and, and mess with me in ways I didn't uh, want to do that. So this black guy files a grievance. Uh, they, they, they eventually came up with an internal test. This was years ago. I got all the records of it, and I came out number one. I remember taking the test, and I just dropped balls in a little thing, you know, like the, at, the, at the amusement park. I've got fairly good hand-to-eye coordination, and I got out of that goddamn ditch. And any time you get more money and less physical labor, that's progress. <clears throat> so anyway, um, uh, the, union, the union got that for me and some others. Some women, came, women became truck drivers and operators. Uh, some other guys, uh, black folks, who, who, they had the same uh, issue. That's obviously why a black man filed that grievance. And... Um, and so people that couldn't have normally become equipment operators or truck drivers and gotten out of the ditch, what have you, and earned more money, uh, they managed to do so. So it was a good thing. So the point I'm raising, the reason I'm raising it is, is that any, the struggle of any peoples, anybody, whether it's a woman struggling in society for equal rights, a black person, a person of color, a gay person, anybody that's marginalized, that's mistreated and, and blocked, because of, of their religion, their race, their sexual orientation, or anything else, uh, that whenever they fight, we all benefit. We all benefit. I benefited from it, and I was, and that's one of the things that was has been on my mind uh, as I've been writing those things about the Teamsters Union. You know, people talk about the state. Now they're asking, they're asking all our support 
uncritically for the whole, th all of the stuff around Ukraine. I mean, the Russians are t our enemies, the Ukrainian aren't, blah, blah, blah. I even see on Netflix they got Zelensky or Zavinsky, Zelensky's comedy, comedy show on there. Now, they're going to be our friends for a little bit. But they're not, our, they're not the friends in the same way. We should uh, feel for them. We should oppose the invasion. We should feel for the R Ukrainian workers, the Russian youth that they're sending. We have different allegiances. And I was thinking of, of, um, of when I went to uh, one of my presidents, uh, Roger and Martinez and I, put a, we had lunch with him the other day. We put his, the picture up. We were in Lafayette. We went out and had lunch with him. He was president in 96, 97, when we were still in the leadership of the union. He's, a, he's an old-timer. He's uh, probably a uh, well. I know he is. He's a Democrat. He's probably he probably looks to FDR as a hero and uh, and a fighter for working people. We're very different in our political views in some ways. When we went to his retirement, um, uh, there was only me, Roger, and uh, one other person, Cheryl, who was the president of the union at the time or close to it. We were, we were a sort of team. We went to his retirement, and there was just mostly people from his unit there. There were no others from the Union, yet they all owe him a lot. They owe him a lot. He wasn't a, he's not a revolutionary, he's still alive. I'm not going to mention his name. Everybody at work will know who he is. He's still alive. We went to his, his, uh, his, his retirement to thank him for what he'd given, and not only that, to thank his family. He'd been through three strikes. He'd been through three strikes. Where were the, some of the radicals in my union, the leftists? Where are the socialists, those that call themselves? I'm a socialist, okay? But names are really very, very meaningless. It's how you, like religion, it's how you act, how you function. Where were they? All, lots of my members, we should have put on a huge retirement for him. He'd been through three, three strikes. His family had been through three strikes. But, it, but he was just your, your average working class man. Who, who, who fought for himself and for our class. And the funny thing is, yes, we all, I benefited from people who fought before me, and they didn't fight for me. They didn't think, oh, I've got to fight for future, future generations. Some of them may have. They fought for their own interests. But when they fought for their own interests, when a black worker fights for their interests, when a gay worker fights for their interests, it's fighting for our class as a whole. I've benefited from the struggles those workers fought in the past. I have a good job and a good retirement in this country, in America, where if you have no money, you're nothing. All the pomp and circumstance and militarized, talk about the military, our heroes, warriors, it's all garbage. It's all garbage. It's all for when they go out. When they come back, it's a different ball game. It's a different ball game. So I'm gonna end it there, because I'll go on, you know how I am, but I don't have time to write anything. But this was some of my thoughts, you know, about when I went to his retirement, and there was just three of us outside his own union. The bloody union, oh, the guys at work, everybody. We need to recognize where we got what we have from. Somebody said to me the other day, this country has been good to you. I said, I got what I got for, because people fought for it, people I don't even know. Okay? And so I, I, I might make a few more of these and stop trying to think about writing this, that, and the other, or what have you. Anyway, but I do have a blog. Uh, there are others around the blog. It's the EU URL is we know what's up .blogspot com. Please follow it, so forth. Uh, it's called Facts for Working People, actually, if you remember, if you can't remember the URL, and um, and you'll find it. Anyway, Richard Miller, just saying a few words to others in my class. All right, take care. Bye.